you're holding this mark up. You know, regular order, it just kind of makes me smile. Regular order is the congressional Bigfoot. We're all told it exists and none of us has ever seen it. I've been here 11 years. I don't even know what regular order is. And I'm, t I'm told that regular order will solve this problem. I don't believe it. Um, most people don't believe it either. Just recently, um, in October, uh, Paul Krugman, um, the award-winning, Nobel Prize-winning economist, generally argues um, that uh, debt has not been something to be concerned about, writes an article that I asked be, uh, unanimous consent be put into the record, why we should but won't reduce the budget deficit. Now, he's telling us that this is a problem. He doesn't believe Congress will take care of it. He's not arguing for a commission, but nobody thinks. Nobody thinks, and there's no evidence to suggest that this issue will be, will be, um, will be taken up without a different approach, and that's what we're proposing today. Um, the gentleman at the beginning who started with a, um, a, a little protest about not cutting Social Security, sure, I, I'm with him, but I really think he's got it wrong, as I've said before. Social, Social Security cuts are baked into the law right now. If we go another 10 years and the lines cross, it's a 24% across the board cut. That's an existing law. Whether you're 72 or 92, rich or poor, you're gonna get cut. Now, we could pretend that doing nothing is gonna solve that problem. We could pretend that regular order is gonna take care of it. I, I choose to offer a different path. I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think anyone thinks it's gonna work. I don't think anyone who's 30 years old today thinks that there, there's anything in social security for them. I want to save it. I don't want to cut benefits. But the dynamic we face is that the longer we wait, the longer we creep toward 24% cuts across the board, the more leverage we give to the people who want to cut benefits. Because the day, the day before it's a 24% cut, they're going to say, how's a 15% cut for you? If we act today, maybe we can avoid that. Maybe we can really, uh, because we already have a weak social safety net in this country. Maybe we could avoid that but not by waiting. And by the way, if you want something out in public, waiting is just gonna give you that backroom deal the night before that happened in 1983 that resulted in cuts. Um, so um, I've been just, we'll maybe speak a little bit to it later, but I sought, sought a lot of um, input from across the board. I heard comments from, two, from uh, Mr. Doggett who noted um, that our bill did not explicitly include a commitment to produce recommendations on revenue me measures. We thought that was implicit. We put it into the bill. Uh, Mr. Blumenauer asked for more public input. We thought that was obvious, but it wasn't. We put it into the bill. Um, I think that we, we've talked to other um, members of the Progressive Caucus who are worried that the benefits of the investments you make if you borrow money that come back to the budget won't be accounted for. We put that into the bill, uh, and the, man, the majority has been, um, has been cooperative on that way. Um, if, if I thought that we could do this without a commission, I'd be happy to do it, but I just think it's obvious that it's not. This is a, this is a way to get started. And if we come up with something that doesn't have revenues in it or that puts this on the backs of federal employees who have already done their part uh, and, doesn't, and isn't equitable, we're not going to vote it onto the floor, and it's not going to get voted if it gets on the floor. So we have a lot of protection. Let's do something about this. This makes sense, and I, I ask for my colleague's support. Yield back. Thank the gentleman from California.